Uh, morning, Mikkel. Um, hope you're well. Um, could you give us a, a health and fitness update, first of all, in particular, Bakayo Saka? Is he okay after his knock the other night? Well, when we see today, um, some players had to come in yesterday to get assessed uh, after the game. We had a couple of knocks. And then we have the players that uh, they've been through all the regulations through COVID uh, with um, different individuals, um, which I think we're going to recover for the game against West Brom. But um, we will be between today and tomorrow, see who is available, who is fit, and how is everybody feeling. Okay, um, and Saka in, in particular, uh, is there an update on him? And, and how invaluable is he to your squad at the moment, the way he is playing? I hope he's available. Uh, we will see if we train him today or not. He's played a lot of minutes as well, and um, I'm confident that he will be okay for a game. Great. Um, back to back wins, Mikel, in the league for the first time since the very start of the season. Um, what, what has that done to morale around the place, and how much? Get the results in the last uh, two games, but there are a lot of things still that uh, we have to do better and improve. Confidence wise, obviously. It's a, it's a completely different scenario when you are winning football matches. Everybody um, is playing with more freedom, more belief. The pressure um, gets released a little bit, and uh, that's always a positive thing to, uh, towards performances. And on Saturday, you go to West Brom, who obviously had a change of manager recently, and a couple of uh, very different, uh, the very different results. What have you, what have you made of what you've seen in those in those two matches from West Brom? Well, two very different matches. Um, the first one against Liverpool, when they had a really clear plan and they executed it really good. I think um, even going one nil down, they didn't really change anything at all. They knew that they were going to have their moments. They grow and they got into the game and be much more efficient in the second half and put Liverpool in trouble. Um, Sam is very efficient at what he does. He has his very clear philosophy of playing. He always picked up results. He always makes it really difficult for you and um, and it's not going to be different. His teams are always really well organised and they know exactly what to do. So it will be a tough test again. Thank you, Mikael. Thank you. Um, when I spoke to you, I think a couple of weeks ago, you s talked about beginning to feel the pressure. Two wins, two very different performances and you kind of looked and sounded like a different person for yourself? Has that pressure lifted on you? I think it's lifted on everybody, but it's not, uh, honestly, the same pressure, of course, we understand. And um, most of that pressure is coming through that willing to, to do so well and uh, disappointing people um, more than anything else and just trying to find ways to improve the situation as much as possible. Sometimes in this game it's difficult to explain the reason why you lose football games and sometimes doing much better uh, than the opponent, uh, you lose it and sometimes when you don't deserve that much, you still win football games. It's what it is, uh, but what it was clear is that we needed to, to win games, to release that pressure for everybody. We've done that, but it's um, still a long way to go. You learn a lot, don't you, about your players in maybe tougher times and soccer for you has been brilliant throughout the last few games, man of the match. What's he like? How enjoyable is it to have a player like that to coach? Is he one of these players that wants to soak up the information? Is, is he just desperate to be out there all the time and, and learn? Yes, then that should be a given though by any player. You know that they are always uh, trying to learn, trying to get better. For me, the biggest thing, uh, that uh, he's done in the past few months is that um, the personality that he plays with and the responsibility he takes in the decision that he's willing to make uh, when things are not going well and the impact he's had for the team to get results and uh, that at that age is not common at all but that's in his nature and he wants to evolve that you could see that uh, his teammates trust him his team wants to give him that responsibility and that's great because then you don't have one or two players, you have more players. And it's a great example as well for any young player um, to play with, with that commitment, with that passion, but as well with that courage um, when you have to play for a big team. And um, we know uh, Sam Allardyce um, has concerns being 
in his 60s about playing given the current climate. I mean, three quarters of the country is now at tier four, isn't it? And you probably know, well, you do know what it was like. You were the first kind of to, to get COVID. Um, do you understand his concerns and do you feel that a circuit breaker is or isn't the, would have been the right decision? We know it's not going to happen, but can you understand where he's coming from? Absolutely. I think uh, we are all concerned uh, with our own health and as well with uh, what is going on around us. But as I said, that all the protocols that we have in place, um, everything that we do around the training ground, about football matches, the fact that we play our sport outdoors, it minimizes the risks a lot. Uh, you see the records since we started to test, it's incredibly positive. And uh, I think as long as we can, we have to carry on doing that, obviously without putting anybody at risk. But I think we've shown that the system is working. Okay, in the last uh, week or so, something has happened. Um, I think we're going to have more restriction even, and we're going to have more tests uh, to try to be, again, as efficient as we were before, and we will see. But um, I think it can work, and I think we can carry on doing it. Uh, just finally, a couple of um, transfer lines. Uh, Sky, our colleagues in Germany say Klasnach has, has gone back on loan to Schalke. Can you just confirm or bring us up to speed with that? I cannot confirm anything uh, yet. We are working on a couple of things. Obviously, um, the window um, is going to bring a lot of news. Some are true, some are not. Uh, whenever we have something to say, we will announce it. Is there any truth in that move? Sky Germany is saying it's close to being done. I mean, yeah, some conversations right around a few players and, and whether we can find some loans uh, because the numbers we have in this squad at the moment are really big. So, again, we cannot confirm anything yet. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks, Gail. How are you? Good. Um, if I can just pick up on. Um, so you said before there about the fact that football is, is safe and the numbers have been positive in terms of the lack of uh, p people in football that have tested positive for coronavirus. Do you think that going forward it's important not only for footballers and for clubs to keep going but also for the mental health of supporters to be able to see games um, and that's why another reason why football should keep going? Well, uh, <laughs> The importance of, of football in these societies is massive. I think when you ask around and you talk to people uh, what it means to have football games in this uh, difficult period for everybody when there is not so much to do, I think it's uh, it's really, really important. Uh, what we have to do is just uh, try to do it in a safe way as we have been doing uh, recently. And if we carry on, I think there are many, many positives too. In terms of you, um, what a difference a week makes. Two victories over Chelsea and Brighton. You, you are a very different man to be speaking to to a week ago. I mean, football does that to, to managers, huh? I am the same man. Uh, I am obviously happier and, and more released. Um, but results uh, in this industry change everything. And uh, the perception is completely different when you win matches. And, and we all know that. And uh, we needed that. And yes, Ian, I am happier. It, did, it, did it amuse you or, or, or was it a real when people started mentioning Arsenal possibly being in a relegation zone, uh, battle? Because I, I always thought it was a little over the top, some of that talk. Well, but when we got the games uh, that we did and you are in the position you are in the table, at the end it's, it's what it is and you have to accept and there is nothing worse for me than uh, trying to run away uh, that, uh, that reality. And uh, for me, the worrying thing as well it was the way we were losing football matches and the reason why we were losing them. And that obviously brings a, a sense of fear that, wow, without them doing nothing, they can still be good, you know. OK, we broke that tendency. Now we're in a much positive run. But again, there is a lot to do. Finally, the phrase, uh, you can't win anything with kids was, was coined a long time before you came to, to, to English football. But you would have seen some, some terrific young talent, probably none better than Wayne Rooney come through during your time over here. Um, you're now trusting in young players, you know, not only Bikeo Saka, but Emil Smith-Rowe and, you know, Joe Willock and, and Eddie Kent has been in and around the team. How, how important is that for you that these young players now, you know, in 2021, really kick on and show 
what they can do and repay the faith you've put in them in the last week? Well, we know that um, our club uh, has a history to bring uh, people, uh, players to the academy. It's in our DNA. We want to keep doing it. I think I've done it since the day that I came to that door. But they need the right process. They need the right players around them. And you have to respect the timing of the development. There is nothing worth rushing those players when they are not ready. If they are ready, they respond, keep doing it. Then you don't have to hold them back. Uh, because you know the energy, the passion, and what they want to do. Let them run the sprints and do whatever they want. But, uh, but they need as well. 11 kids, it's impossible. When you have the right mixer, and then these kids they start to become uh, more senior players, and they have a little bit more experience, and then they are in a good development phase, let's go for it. But uh, we have to be cautious with that as well. Happy New Year, Mikhail. Thanks. Happy New Year. Thank you. So, um, just to pick you up on one of uh, the subjects Ian was talking about there, presumably at the start of the season, the, the target was Champions League football by the Premier League. Then you find yourself struggling at the bottom. Now you're picking up results again. What would represent a successful season for Arsenal now? I never go that far. Um, for me, the important thing is the next match and how we do that. And, and if we can get a result there and how we get that result. What is our performance, how we are evolving. Uh, and when you don't, okay, the things that we have to improve, uh, and see how people react when things are not going well, because it is a real assessment for your squad, for your staff, for the players, and as a club. And uh, we've been through a lot in the last few months, some really positive things that we have been able to change, some achievements that we didn't expect to have, and as well a lot of disappointments recently in terms of results. Um, for me to plan, and in this world, what is going to happen at the end of the season, what is good or bad, um, it's impossible to say. Uh, we know the aim for this football club when you win every competition that you are involved in. And it has to be nothing less than that. But uh, as well, we have to understand the context that we are in, respect that, but always have the mentality to change it as quick as possible. Do you see any similarities to last season? I know that you came in this sort of time last season, but it seems like you're picking up a team now where results were going badly and now there's a bit of a lift going into the new year. Is that, is that similar? Well, it's different because I've already been here a year and I've seen and I've got much better understanding of what is going on, um, what is working, what has to be changed and how we can do that. But um, yeah, the challenge is not uh, very different um, and I think we know better um, how to do it, I think. Okay. It's on December the 3rd and he was 19th man against Spurs and we haven't seen him in a squad since, but he has been training. What's what's going on with Reese at the moment? Yeah, he had uh, a little niggle. He's not been feeling 100%. He had a muscular issue. He's been in and out of training. He's not been 100%. It's a shame because uh, I felt that uh, he was getting into his performance levels. Uh, he started to have some really good games and he was starting to to build that momentum. And uh, this little injury stepped him back a little bit, but um, I think this week he's been much better. Mm, yeah, because I remember after that he scored scored in a moulder, didn't he? And you said he'd had a click and you're full of praise for him then. So I think people have been assuming possibly this might be something to do with January transfer or something like that, that you haven't been using him, but, but that's no, not the case. Probably, probably it's my mistake then not to clarify the situation and what was happening. But uh, yeah, he's not been 100% fit. That's the reason why he's been out and he's not been featuring around the squad. Thank you. Uh, given the, the sort of size of the squad and the issues we know you've had there, you've mentioned it earlier, is the focus going into January now certainly getting players out before you can really even think about that, sort of potentially bringing players in, given where we are in financially and things like that, would loans be more likely than permanent this month? And is it important if you do bring someone in that it doesn't stifle the development of a young player like Emil Smith-Rowe or something like that? Yeah, we need to be careful with that. Uh, obviously, financially, it's not only us. It's every club in the Premier League that has been hit uh, with big numbers. Uh, we know that this is not going to change in the last year or so, that we're going to have to add somehow if we want to improve the team in different ways, uh, financially, some support. Um, and we will decide whether this is with loans or buy and play in relation to the, to the opportunity that we have in the market. Thank you, Miguel. Happy New Year. Um, 
Just on the COVID situation, do you find it personally difficult to keep playing, training and working with all the protocols? Well, first of all, we, I feel that we are really privileged because we can still do our work. We are a lot of time uh, outside on the grass and, uh, and we can be together. You know, a lot of people are suffering and we cannot complain about anything. What it is true is that it's a completely different preparation uh, for football matches, for your training session, and as well as a team, how you keep a team alive with the spirits and build a culture. Um, that is a challenge, obviously, because the restrictions are what they are. And you have uh, five Premier League games in January after two wins on, on the bounce. Do you look at those with a bit more excitement now? I always very excited every time I play a game and uh, and I'm managing the team. But uh, obviously, when you need results, you want those games to come quickly because we need to pick up the points. And um, that's why, as well, I think that uh, it will be really good to carry on playing and don't stop again. Uh, try to get some momentum. Try to get the results that we want and and move forward quickly. And with Smith Rowe, Saka, Martinelli, Lacazette, and Aubameyang, are you a uh really happy with your forward options? Yes, I am really happy. We have uh, different qualities in different positions. I think uh, the cohesion between them is getting much better for different reasons as well in the season. We haven't been able to play them alongside each other um, at all. And that needs a little bit of time as well, because at the end it's a split of seconds in attacking moment, which is the hardest thing in football. And you need to create that chemistry between players. So 